welcome. Today I am checking out a uh, acoustic baffle that I made for the jam space that I'm in, uh, and the goal is to reduce the overall noise that uh, comes out of a closed back 4x12 uh, half stack. Okay, so this is the baffle. It is about, uh, I believe that is 28 inches square. And I attached uh, two uh, fairly thick blankets folded over a few times um, to the surface. I propped it up a little bit here. It's on um, some 2x6s, just what I had lying around, and some old plywood from a previous project. And it just covers the face of the cabinet like so. Um, I will probably need a bigger one. Uh, or a taller one for when I do full stacks, uh, just because people like to use full stacks when they practice. Uh, you know, the, the guitarists, they enjoy it. Uh, but we'll have to turn them down and baffle them uh, so that they don't annihilate the building. Um, yeah, but it's really, really simple. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes to put together. Uh, that included planning. I think if you already had a good plan, you would be set to go. Um, fairly straightforward, fairly easy to do, and the goal is to stop the immediate directional uh, first sound from coming out past the half stack, and um, hopefully reduce the overall sound in the room, uh, and ideally make it easier for players to hear themselves uh, in more of a mixed room sound than um, trying to aim their cabinet directly at them, because inadvertently that'll usually end up beaming somebody else with your own sound, and if you're not right in the line of fire of your own cabinet, uh, you could be completely missing your own sound, um, causing you to want to turn up even more, uh, which is a huge problem when you're in a shared space, but we want to be loud enough to go over the drums, so that's what this little test is all about. So uh, I've been having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how to record this and then listen to it back and talk about the results. So we're going to do it one step at a time. Um, I'm going to place a microphone in the back uh, outside of the jam space in the general uh, area. And then I am going to put a microphone right under the um, right into the speaker cone uh, the way I normally mic during uh, practices to see if the baffle affects the way that the 57 picks up the speaker. Um, so I feel like that would be important to know. And then I'm also going to be putting a microphone right where, um, across from the cabinet, which is where my drummer is usually seated. So we're going to check out what the three of those sound like with a baffle, without a baffle, and then I'm going to try angling the baffle to get it as close as possible to the cabinet just to see if that changes the game a little bit more. So let's check it out. All right, so we are going to check out uh, the way that the baffle may or may not have affected the uh, sound in the room. So the way we're going to do this is I'm just going to listen through it. We're going to start one thing at a time and uh, see where the uh, baffle changes the sound. Okay, so this is the 57, just going into the cabinet. Sounds pretty clean so far, no apparent problems. Yeah, so this waveform looks really, really consistent. Uh, where you see the room waveform underneath is uh, swelling and uh, unswelling. You know, it's getting louder and quieter, which hopefully means that our baffle is doing something effective. Uh, I think it was. It sounded like it in the room, certainly. 
So uh, I think that is enough 57. I can't detect really much of a difference here. Uh, I would say it's negligible for something like a uh, recording session, a demo during a practice. Yeah, so we are duplicating it so that I can listen to the other parts. Uh, so we did the 57. We're going to try out what the room sounds like. Um, and then we are going to try out what the drummer is hearing uh, from their position. So I'm just going to jack up that audio. And uh, let's turn on the room. You can definitely hear background noise. I'm not playing super loud because it's a little late in the day, but... Okay, that gets a lot fuller, a lot louder. Okay, then it kind of goes away. Let's see if we can see what's happening here. This is in a fatter part. It's very quiet here. So, we're going to see. I don't know if my cursor is capturing, but we're about to come up on a much more choked, muted sound. Okay. Now we're getting fuller again. See, this is kind of a blind test, because I don't know where, at what times I was moving the baffle. I think this is when the baffle was all the way on it, like I was leaning it against the amplifier. It's that super choked sound. And then it fills back up a little as I'm pulling the baffle back out. And I think I finished the video by, by straightening it, but we're going to see. You can hear my keys jingling, which is fun. Yeah, and then that had to stop. Okay, so now we're rolling straight into the... Um, the drummer microphone so that's just a directional microphone put from the drummer I'm not mad at how that sounds actually I think that's kind of cool hmm. okay so it almost appears to get louder oh something weirds happening okay Yeah. Okay, and then I think that's opening back up. And so, yeah, really one of the worries is that the drummer is just going to get fucking blasted with, uh, with sound from the guitars. Because one of the previous problems we had was uh, guitarist number one was facing guitarist number two's amp. He was right in the line of fire, and guitarist number two was facing guitarist number one's amp. Uh, they were kind of in an L formation. Uh, poor planning, honestly, uh, but guitar player number two wanted to, uh, he was playing into his legs, you know, with the stack down. We didn't angle it or anything like that. So I think uh, a room sound like this would be, um, you know, beneficial. Okay. So I'm going to review the tapes, and we are going to see uh, what was where. And I'm going to have a little recap uh, just to see if this was a successful experiment or not. So after looking at the video of when I moved the baffle uh, and listening to the sound, it is pretty obvious that it makes a huge difference in the room. Uh, most notably, I think, to the mic that is over the drummer, um, just so the uh, that's the biggest difference between baffle and no baffle but the in the room sound was significant the one that was just outside of the practice space um and i think i'm probably going to be using this method to uh control sound a little bit more uh in the room and um hopefully help people hear themselves a little bit better uh so i'm probably going to be making at least another two of these baffles I don't know how well it'll work on bass. Um, if I find anything interesting, I will talk about that too. Um, yeah, but I was surprised by the fact that the 57 uh, right in the cone 
didn't really change much. Um, it did not make the recording sound bad by by any uh, measure. Um, it all sounded pretty solid. Um, I am uh, very happy about that because uh, if I want to use like a 57 to record during practice, if I'm not doing like a cab sim or something like that, um, it is going to be helpful that I can still use the baffles. But yeah, I think this was a successful experiment. And uh, if you stuck around this long, thank you for checking it out. Um, and there will be more similar content soon. Let me know if you have used baffles uh, or any other sound dampening methods uh, and what their effectiveness was and if it changed the way your band practices or the way you record. Thank you, and I will see you in the future.